Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, my name is Mr. Zabron Ernest. I teach maths. I'm a teacher here in Tanzania. And today I'll be taking through uh, my worksheet, which is uh, the worksheet which I provided to my students in my class. So uh, this is made to help my students in such a way that when they get stuck at home, they can quickly jump into uh, YouTube and get access to my video, which is talking about uh, this worksheet. Okay, without further ado, uh, let us continue from where we ended. Cool, uh, we ended over here on this uh, page, uh, the way how it is displayed here. And I'm going to read the question as follows. Uh, the question says, some frozen food is stored at negative eight degrees centigrade. During a power failure, the temperature increases by three degrees every single minute. Complete this table to show the temperature of the food after one minute, after two minutes, after three minutes, and after four minutes. So when time was equal to zero minutes, this was the uh, the start temperature or the original temperature. So when time was equal to zero minute, the start temperature was negative eight. Now, uh, in order to visualize the solution uh, very clearly, I'm going to use uh, the number line so that you can visualize uh, the solution. Okay, so we have uh, the, all these temperatures will be recorded on the number line as follows. This is your number line. And uh, we have the temperature when time is zero minute. So when time is zero minute, the temperature is negative eight. Now, the question says, during a power failure, the temperature increases by three degrees. Okay. So, if it increases, that means we'll be moving to the right-hand side. But if the temperature was decreasing, we could be, uh, we could be moving to the negative direction or to the left hand side direction. So since the temperature is increasing, then we'll be heading to the right hand side. Okay, now the temperature is increasing by how much? The temperature is increasing by three degrees centigrade. So what does it mean? On the number line, we have to count three steps from negative 8 to the right hand side because the temperature is increasing by 3 degrees centigrade so you have to count three units from negative 8 going to the right hand side so from negative 8 count 1 2 3 stop over here so from negative 8 drop by 3 units i mean from negative 8 increase from negative 8 to the right hand side this will be from negative 8 then the number after negative 8 is negative 7 and the number after negative 7 to the right is negative 6 and the number after negative 6 to the right hand side is negative 5 see that so after 
after one minute, after one minute, the temperature is negative five, is negative five degrees centigrade. Now, after the second minute, the temperature will increase from negative five, it will increase by three degrees centigrade, by three degrees centigrade. So from here, you have to count one, two, three. So from here, count one, two, three. You stop over here. Now we ended on negative five. So to the, to the right of negative five, we have negative four. We have negative three. We have negative two. Okay. So from negative five, count three degrees centigrade. One, two, three. So after the second minute, that will be total time will be after two minutes. So from here to here, time will be two minutes. Here. So after two minutes, the temperature will be negative two degrees centigrade. Okay, now from where we ended, again we count, again we have to count three degrees. From here, we have ended on negative two, so from here we count three degrees. One, two, three, stop. Okay, now from negative two, to the right, we have negative one, we have zero, and then we have one. But mind you, from here, how much time has gone? This was the first minute, this was the first minute, and this was the second minute, and this is the third minute. So how much time has gone? From here to here, we have a total of three minutes. So from here until here, we have a total of three minutes. How much is the temperature? The temperature is, let us check, negative two, negative one, zero, then we have one. So from negative two, we have one, two, three, and when you read the number line, after negative two will be negative one, will be zero, will be one. So after three minutes, the temperature will be, after three minutes, the temperature will be one degree centigrade. Okay, keep going until you hit the fourth minute. So from here, count three degrees because the temperature, the temperature is increasing. The temperature is increasing by three degrees. So from here, we count one, two, three. You stop over here, then count from uh, from where you ended. We ended on one. To the right, this will be two, this will be three, and this will be four degrees centigrade. So the temperature is four degrees centigrade. All right, that is done. Let's move to the next question. The next question is here. Oh, this this page is talking about uh, tests for divisibility. All right, you can take your time to read all these tests for divisibility, but I'll be reading them quickly. Uh, these tests will help you decide whether numbers are divisible by other numbers. For example, if you want to find out if the number is divisible by two, we say a number is divisible by two if it's the last if it's the last digit if its last digit is either zero or two or four or six or eight. A number is divisible by two if its last digit is either a zero or a two or a four or a six or eight. That means. That means that 2 is a factor of the number, okay? If you want to find out whether the number 
is divisible by 3. The first thing you have to do is to add the digits that make up uh, the number. So if the sum you get after adding all the digits, if the sum you get is divisible by 3, so the original number will also be divisible by 3. For example, take an example of 6,786. Now the question is, is this number divisible by 3? Okay, if you want to find out if this number 6,786 is divisible by 3, the first thing you have to do is to add the digits. The digits are 7, I mean the digits are 6, 7, 8, and 6. So you have to add them. Take 7 plus 7, I mean take 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 6, the answer is 27. If you find that 27 is still bigger, a bigger number, then you can take the digits which make up the number 27 and add them. What do you get? 2 plus 7 will be equal to 9. Now the question is, is 9 divisible by 3? Or is 27 divisible by 3? If the answer is yes, so even this number will also be divisible by 3. So we say this is a multiple of 3, and so therefore 6,786 is also a multiple of 3. And in that case, this number will be divisible by 3. Okay, Divis uh, how do we find out whether the number is divisible by 4? Now we say a number is divisible by 4 if it's the last two digits form a number that is divisible by 4. For example, consider this number here. Take this number as an example. The number is 3726. Now what are the last two digits? The last two digits are 2 and 6. The last two digits are the last two digits from this number are two and six, which makes a number twenty-six. Now the question is, is this number twenty-six divisible by four? No. This number is not divisible by four because it will leave the remainder. Now since twenty-six is not divisible by four, hence this number here, 3,706, is not a multiple of 4 because 26 is not divisible by 4. Okay, uh, how do we find out that the number is divisible by 5? A number is said to be divisible by 5 if the last digit is either a 0 or a 5. That is very easy to understand. Okay. Uh, come to uh, divisibility by 6. So we say a number is divisible by 6 if it is divisible by 2 and divisible by 3. We know how to find out if the number is divisible by 2. We say it and we repeat. A number is divisible by 2. A number is divisible by 2 if the last digit is either 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. And here, a number is said to be divisible by 3 if the sum of all the digits making up the number is divisible by 3. If you take the digits which make up the number and add them, the sum you get, if that sum will be divisible by 3, so that number or the original number will also be divisible by 3. In other words, it will be the multiple of the number 3. So we say a number is said to be divisible by 6. A number is said to be divisible by 6 if it is divisible by both 2 and 3.
for uh, divisibility by seven is not, it doesn't have a simplest test for that. So for, divis uh, for divisibility by seven, you can ignore that for now. Uh, how do we test that the number is divisible by eight? This is a little bit similar to divisibility by four, where we said a number is said to be divisible by four if the last two digits form a number that is divisible by four. Now for the case of divisibility by eight, we say a number is divisible by eight if it's the last three digits, if it's last three digits from a number that is divisible by eight. See that? Take an example of this number over here, 17,816. Now the question is, is this number a multiple of eight? How do we test that? We look at the last three digits. The last three digits in this number, the last three digits in this number are eight, one, and six, making up the number 816. Now the question is, is this number here divisible by eight? Let me check, check your calculator. Take your calculator like this. Okay. Then perform the, the calculations. You do 816 divided by 8. If the answer will be a whole number, that means it's not a decimal, then this number is divisible by 8. But if the result after dividing by 8 is a decimal, then this number is not divisible by 8. Let us see. Equals to the whole number 102. So here, the answer is 102. Now, since this is a, since that is a whole number, then we say 816 is divisible by 8. Hence, the original number, this original number here, is divisible by 8 because when we took the last three digits divided by 8, we got 102, which has no remainder. So this number is divisible by 8, or this number is a multiple of 8. Divisibility by nine is easy to understand. You simply uh, remember the divisibility test for the number three. For the divisibility, uh, divisibility test for the number three, we said what you have to do is you take the digits making up the number, find the sum, and see if the sum is divisible by three. The same applies to a nine. A number is said to be divisible by nine if the sum of all the digits making up the number will be divisible by nine. So if that sum of all digits making up the number is divisible by nine, so even the original number will be a multiple of nine, or even the original number will be divisible by nine. Take an example of 6,000. Take an example of 6,800, 6,786. Take an example of this number. And you want to find out whether this number is divisible by nine. What did we say? You take the digits making up this number. These digits are six seven, eight, and six, and add them. How much do you get? Six plus seven is 13. 13 plus eight is 21. 21 plus six is 27. See this number here? 
Is this number divisible by 9? The answer is yes. Now, since this number 27 is divisible by 9, so the same applies to this number, will also be divisible by 9. So, yes, this number is divisible by 9. And you can even check using a calculator whether that number is divisible by 9. This number is 67, 86, divided by 9. Now, if we don't get a decimal, then that number is divisible by 9. Okay? Then we've got a whole number, so it's not a decimal. So this number over here is divisible by 9. What if you want to further confirm that you are not sure whether 27 is divisible by 9? So what you do, you take the digits which makes up the number 27, add these digits, you get 2 plus 7 is 9. Now the question is, is 9 divisible by 9? The answer is yes. So since the answer is yes for this, so even this number will be divisible by 9. Finally, will be divisibility test for 10 or 100, even 1,000. Let us start with divisibility by 10. A number will be divisible by 10 if it is multiples of 10 ending with a zero. Also, a number is said to be divisible by 100 if it ends with multiples of 100. That means it is ending with two zeros. For example, the number 20 is ending with one zero. So in that case, 20 is divisible by 10. Whereas 200 is a number that is ending with two zeros. So in that case, this number will be divisible by 100. How about 2000? The number 2000 is ending with three zeros. So in this case, this number will be divisible by 1000. I hope that helps. Now, let us go to the questions. Let's go to the questions. And remember our discussion. We said that, we said that, okay, let us state, answer the question. Use a divisibility test to decide which of the numbers in the box A is a multiple of three, B is a multiple of six. What did we say on how to find out if a number is a multiple of 3 or a number is divisible by 3? We said, take an example, this number, 421. What did we say? If you want to find out whether this number is divisible by 3, what we do? we add these digits which answer do we get four plus two is six six plus one is seven now the question is is seven divisible by three the answer is no why seven divided by three leaves a remainder so in that case 421 is not a multiple Three. How about the number 222? In order to find out whether 222 is a multiple of 3, what do we do? We add the digits making up that number and see the result. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. The question is, is 6 divisible by 3? The answer is yes. How? 6 divided by 3 equals 2. And 2 is not a decimal number. So, 
this 222 is a multiple of 3. Keep going, find out whether this number 594 is, di is divisible by 3. What did we say? We take the digits making up this number 594 and add them. What do we get? 5 plus 9 is 14. 14 plus 4 is 18. Okay, the question is 18 divisible by 3. If you are not sure, if you are not sure whether 18 is not divisible by, sorry, if you are not sure whether 18 is divisible by 3, what we do? We add these digits again and see the result. What is 1 plus 8? Is nine. Now question will be, is 9 divisible by 3? See that? The answer is yes. Now, when you say the answer is yes, what is the implication? It means that this number over here is a multiple of 3. How about, how about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How about 12,345? Is this number divisible by 3? Let us check. Step 1, add the digits. What do you get? 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. Plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. If you are not sure whether 15 is divisible by 3, keep going with the addition. 15, we are not sure if 15 is divisible by 3, so keep keep up with the process of adding 1 plus 5 is 6. Now question, is 6, div uh, is, is 6 divisible by 3? The answer is yes. Now, this yes answer suggests that this number over here is divisible by 3, or is a multiple of 3. Lastly, we have the number 67,554. See that? 67,554. Is this number divisible by 3? Add these digits. When you add these digits, what answer do we get? 6 plus 7 is 13, plus 5 is 18, 18 plus 5 will be 23, plus 4 will be 27. You can even do addition using your calculator. This is 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 5, then plus 4. You get 27. Now, if you are not sure whether 27 is divisible by 3, what do we do? Add again the 2 and 7. What do you get? You get 9. Now, the question is, is 9 divisible by 3? The answer is yes. See that? Now, this yes answer suggests that this number is divisible by 3. So far, so good. Now, what is the conclusion? The conclusion over here, we say, uh, the numbers which, the question is, use a divisibility test to decide which of the numbers in the box is a multiple of three. So to answer part A, we say the numbers, to mention the numbers, <laughs> 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, or 222, 595, 12,345, 67,554 are multiples, are multiples of 3. 
Good. Right. Uh, you can pause this video and try uh, part B. Okay. Right. Now, let us proceed. Let's try to erase this and do part B. Now, part B is a bit easy, but we need to do two things. Number one, we need to do two things. Number one, we have to find out if the number is divisible by, by two and divisible by three. Because if we remember what we discussed, we said that a number is said to be a multiple of six if it is divisible by both two and three. Look at this number. 421. This number is not divisible by 2. Why? Because we say a number is divisible by 2 if it ends with the last digit should be either a 0 or a 2 or a 4 or a 6 or 8. But if you look at this number over here, this number over here, the last digit is not is not a zero, it's not a two, it's not a four, it's not a six, it's not a eight. It's something equal to one. So because of that, this number, the first number, 421, is not a multiple of six. How about this number? Since this number is a last digit of 2, hence this number is divisible by 2. How about this number? Is it divisible by 3? Yes, this number is divisible by 3. Remember what we said? Add the digits making up that number and see what you are getting. You are getting a 6, which is divisible by 3. So, here, for the case of which number is a multiple of 6, we have got 2, 2. 222 is one of the multiples of 6. Let us find another number. So, let us keep a sentence over here that multiples multiples of 6 are, we have got the first one, we have got the first number, which is this number. So multiples of 6 are 222. How about this number over here? Let us check if this number is divisible by 2. Yes, this number is divisible by 2. Why? Because it is the last digit here is a 4. How about being divisible by 3? The answer is yes, because when you add the digits in that number, you are going to get 18. And 18 is divisible by 3. So another map of 6 is 594. How about this number? How about the next number? This number here. Number one, check if it is divisible by two. The answer is not because the last digit is a five. In order for then in order for the number to be divisible by two, the last digit should either be a zero or a two or a four or a six or eight. But this number is ending with a five. So because of that, that number is not a multiple of six. How about this number? Yes, that number will be a multiple of 6. The reason being, it is ending with a 4, showing that it is divisible by 2. And when you add the digits, 
making up that number, you are getting something around, this is 13, 18, 22, 27, which we found that 27 is divisible by 3. Now let us check if our answer is correct. If, if these numbers, if these numbers are multiples of 6, that means they are divisible by 6. That is what it means. Let us check 2, 2, divide by 6. Do we get a whole number? The answer is yes, we are getting a whole number. How about, how about 5, 9, 4? divided by 6. Do we get a whole number? The answer is yes, we are getting a whole number. How about 6, 7, 5, 5, 4, divided by, uh, by 6. Do we get a whole number? Yes, of course, we are getting a whole number. Correct. Now, let us go for part C. Which one, which number among, which number among these is a multiple of nine. You can pause the video and try to answer part C and part D. But without wasting time, let me help you. How do we figure out whether the number is a multiple of nine? Okay. Do you remember what we discussed about a multiple of nine? Let us, let us try to refresh our memory. We said that we said that a number is divisible by 9 if when you add the digits, if the sum is divisible by 9, so the original number will also be divisible by 9. So this is similar to the test of divisibility by 3. Okay, I hope you have remembered the concept on how to find out whether the number is divisible by 9. Now let us see the numbers. The numbers are the numbers are 421 421 Now we want to check if this is a multiple of nine. Add these numbers. What do we get? Four plus two, four plus two is six. Six plus one is seven. Is seven divisible by nine? The answer is no. So this is not a multiple of nine. How about 222? Add these digits. What do we get? Two plus two is four, four plus two is six. Is 6 divisible by 9? The answer is no. Keep going. So this is not divisible by 9. How about uh, 594? 594. Add these digits. What do you get? 5, five plus 9 is 14. 14 plus 4 is 18. Is 18 divisible by 9? The answer is yes. Okay, so if the answer is yes, automatically this number is divisible by 9. How about 12345? 12345, add these, these digits over here. 12345. Add those digits, what do you get? 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is uh, 10, plus 5 is 15. Is 15 divisible by 9? The answer is no. So, the answer over here is no. That, that means that number is not a multiple of 9. Now, 67, 5, 5, 4. 67, 67, 5, 5, 4. Try to add these digits. What do you get? 6 plus 7, 6 plus 7, 13, plus 5, 18, 
plus 5, 23 plus 4, 27. Is 27 divisible by 9? The answer is yes. So being a yes answer, this means this means that that number is a multiple of 9. So what do you conclude? We conclude by saying that uh, the multiples, the multiples of 9 are, we found a yes for, found a yes for 594, and we found a yes for 6, 7, 5, 5, Four. So only two numbers are divisible by nine. I hope that helps. Okay, you can pause the video, take notes, and then uh, continue. But for now, let me delete everything, get a space for part D. All right, uh, part D is... Part D is, let me write over here, Part D is finding whether a 5 is a factor of either this number or this number or that number, that number, or that number. So we want to find out whether 5 whether 5 is a factor of this number, okay? Oh, we want to find out whether this number has a factor of 5. This question, we have to find out whether this number has 5 as a factor. So if this number is a 5 is a factor that means this number over here should be divisible by 5 that's the idea now do you remember the divisibility test for the number 5 if you don't remember let me take you back to the divisibility test this is divisibility test for the number 5 what is or how do we know that the number is divisible by 5? We say that a number is divisible by 5 if the last, if the last digit is either a 0 or a 5. Nothing less than that and nothing more than that. We repeat, a number is divisible by 5. If the last digit is either a 0 or a 5. Now let us see these numbers. These numbers over here. Okay. A number. A number has a factor. Has a factor of 5. If it ends with. If it ends with. If this last digit is either a 0 or a 5. Now, in this case, this number is not, this number is not, this number is not, this number, yes. Why? Because it ends with a 5. How about this number? This number is not. Why? Because it is not ending with a 0 or a 5. So we have got one number, which is 12345. So 12345 is has, has 5 as a factor. And how do you check? How do you check that your answer is correct? Pull out your calculator. Pull out your calculator like so. Then type the number over here. 12345 divide by 5. If you get a decimal, then your answer is incorrect, or the number is not divisible by 5. See that? We have got a whole number, so that shows that this number over here has 5 as a factor. Congratulations if you are following properly. 
Then let us go to another set of numbers. Another set of numbers. Okay. You can see a set of numbers over here. Now, this time we are given plenty of numbers. Okay. Which of the numbers in this box, in this box here, which of the numbers is a multiple of 10? Remember what we discussed? A number is a multiple of 10 or a number has 10 as a factor if the last digit is a zero. The last digit should be zero. But in this case, the, the last digit is eight. So this has no uh, 10 as a factor. The last digit is zero. So here, Roman one, which of the numbers in the box is a multiple of 10? So we say multiples of 10 from the box are multiples, multiples of 10 from the box are the first one. We got 5, 5, 8, 1, 0. How did we know? It is ending. It is ending with zero or oh, the last digit here is zero so this is a multiple of 10 how about this no how about this no how about this no how about this no so we have only one number which is a multiple of 10 this number is five five eight one zero okay so i'm done then I go to Roman 2. Roman 2, let us try to go quickly now. We already understood what do we do if a number has 2 as a factor. Now to remind you, a number has 2 as a factor if the last digit is either a 0 or a 2 or a 4 or a 6 or 8. This number is one of them. So we write uh, numbers which has two as a factor. Numbers from the box which has two as a factor. Those numbers are the first one is that five, five, eight, zero, eight. How did we know? Look at the last digit. Look at the last digit. It should be either one of these numbers. The last digit is 8. That shows that this number is divisible by 2. This number as well is divisible by 2 because it ends with 0. 5, 8, 10. This number also. There are plenty of them. 5, 5, 8, 1, 2. How did I know? The last digit is 2. Oh, this number also is divisible by 2. 5, 5, 8, 1, 4. Wow, this number also is divisible by 2. 5, 5, 8, 1, 6. Also, this number. Wow. 5, 5, 8, 1, 8. See that? Let me write properly. We have five, five, eight, one, eight. Okay, so far so good. Has a has four as a factor. Okay. Which of those numbers has four as a factor? Okay, what was the discussion? Let me take you back to the visibility test uh, page. Divisible by 2, it must end with a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Divisible by 4, a number is divisible by 4 if its last two digits form a number that is divisible by 4. Something similar to this.
a number is divisible by four, if a number is divisible by two, if its last digit is either zero, two, four, six, or eight. Okay. Now, now, uh, this divisibility test of the number four and the divisibility test for the number eight, they look exactly similar. Not the same, but similar. A number is divisible by eight if it's the last three digits form a number that is divisible that is divisible by eight. Okay, how about divisible by four? A number is divisible by four if it's the last two digits form a number that is divisible by four. Okay, so for the case of divisibility by four, we look at the last two digits if they form a number that is divisible by four. For the case of divisibility by eight, we look at the last three digits and see if the last three digits will form a number that is divisible by eight. Now let us go to the questions. The questions are this one here. Okay, has four as a factor. Okay, has four as a factor. For the case of the first number here, we have we look at for the case of this number, we want to find out we want to find out if this number has four as a factor. What do we do? We look at the last two digits. Look at the last two digits. The last two digits are zero. The last two digits are zero and eight. Now look at zero and eight. This divisible by four. What is the answer? Okay. Now, if you take the number itself, five 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 eight five five eight zero eight divide by four. See that? See that? You are getting a whole number. Why? Because 08 sounds like 8. Now, is 8 divisible by 4? The answer is yes. See that? So, even this number here will be divisible by 4. How? I have showed you here using a calculator. 55808. 55, we are getting a whole number. When you take that whole number multiply by four, you are going back to the number five eight zero eight. Okay. Or by using divisibility test, by using divisibility test, you look at the last two digits, which are zero and eight. Now zero and eight form a number eight. Now this number eight is divisible by two. I mean it's divisible by four. That equals to a whole number two. See that? So let us write here the answers for common three. So numbers which has four as a factor. As a factor, we have got five five eight zero eight. We've got five five eight zero eight. Let me check if I got it correct. Yes, five five eight zero eight. That the first the first number is a four as factor. How about this number? Look at the last two digits. We are getting ten. Ten is not divisible by four. When you do that, you get a decimal. So this is not. How about this number? Look at the last two digits. Beautiful. They are forming a 12. 12 is divisible by 4. So this number, this number is, is 4 as a factor. So put it there. It is 55812. 55, 55. Five, 
55812. The next number will be no, this is not because it's forming 14. The last two digits form 14, not divisible by 4. This number, yes, the last two digits as the last two digits are 1 and 6, which together form a number 16 that is divisible by 4. So put that there. 55816. How about the last number? The last number is the last two digits are 1 and 8. 1, 8 divided by 4. Nope. Not possible. Not possible. Big now. So we have these three only numbers. See that? All right. Uh, let us go to Roman. Roman three. Roman four. Roman four is we have to check if if these numbers are multiples of eight. Okay. Let us try to copy these these numbers. Okay, copy those numbers. Okay, one minute. Sorry, I will be taking a time. Okay. The computer is taking so much so much time to load. Never mind, things will get good. Oh, we can ignore that. Can we can ignore that? Uh, should I should I try for the second time? Yes, here we go. Let us copy these numbers and put them over here. Yes. All right, so far so good. Uh, we want to find which of those uh, numbers is a multiple of eight. What did we say? The discussion is for the number to be a multiple of eight, look at the last three digits. Let me start with this number. The last, uh, the last digits are the last three digits are 808. Now, is 808 this number divisible by 8? The answer is yes. 808 divided by 8. You are getting the whole number. So, once you say yes, the yes answer will mean that this number is a multiple of 8. So, here we write multiples of 8 are 55808. Next, look at the last three digits. Do they make a number which is divisible by 8? Let us check using a calculator. 810, 810, divide by 8. Do we get a whole number? No getting a decimal. So because of that, this is not a multiple of 8. How about this number? 812. So 812 divided by 8. Do we get a whole number? No. Nope. We are getting a decimal. So cancel that. How about that number? 8814 divided 814 divided by 8, what do you get? Nope. Getting a decimal. How about this number? 816. 816 divided by 8. Yes, we are getting a whole number. So this is... Okay. Uh, this one is 55816. Five, this stick. How about this one? 
look at the last three digits. 818, 818 divided by 8. Do we get a whole number? No, we are getting a decimal. So we have only two numbers which are multiples of 8. Oh, wow. So we have come to the end of that page. Let me check how much time we have used. We have gone one hour now. Let us try to pull up and do mixed questions. Now, for those who do not know what does mixed question mean, mixed questions, uh, this comprises of questions which have been extracted from past paper examination questions. And you remember what I said in my previous videos, I said this uh, worksheet is specifically for students of year, year 7, year 8, and year 9 who are taking or who are following checkpoint syllabus. Okay? And this checkpoint syllabus is offered by Cambridge. Okay? So now these questions why are they labeled mixed questions? Because these are past paper, past paper, examination, examination style questions. Okay, past paper, that is number one. Number two, also some of progressive, some of progressive tests that have been put in the in the website of Cambridge. So I downloaded all the pro, all the progressive tests that has been uh, uh, that has been offered by Cambridge people. And also I downloaded specimen specimen papers that is found in Cambridge website secondary one okay so you can see how uh, these mixed questions are very very important because they guide us and they really show us how cambridge people set questions okay let us start with question number one calculate calculate a b and probably this is C. Now, calculate 25.2 divided by 4. Now, like as I said earlier, you will be sitting for paper 1 and paper 2 during checkpoint examination. During checkpoint examination. And this checkpoint examination is usually done every year in April. See that? So in paper one, if the question comes in paper one, no use of calculators. So here, no calculator. No use of calculator. If the question comes in paper two, calculators are allowed. Calculators are allowed. So on this page, from this page on, I'll be doing both using uh, I mean, without without using calculator and with a calculator. So let me start with part A. What is 25.2 divided by 4? Now, let me start using a calculator. Let me start using a calculator. You have 25.2 divided by 4. What is the answer? The answer is 6.3. Cool, yeah? This is using a calculator. What if you use mentally? You do 25.2 divide by 4. See that? 2 divided by 4 is not possible. Move one step ahead. This is 25 divided by 4. That is 6. 6 times 4. This is 24. Subtract. The remainder is 1. See that? Take this point, put it over here. This decimal point, put it over here. Then drop it to, and this becomes 12. 
12 divided by 4, the answer is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. When you subtract, the remainder is 0. So here, both mentally and using a calculator, you are getting the same answer, 6.3. Good, yeah? Correct. How about 12.7 times 6? Okay. You can pause the video and try that. Now, uh, let me erase all this. See that? Now, let us use a calculator. Okay. What is 12.7 times 6? 12.7 multiplied by 6. See that? You are getting a decimal, 76.2. Okay. What if you don't want to use a calculator? What do we do? If the question comes in paper 1, where we don't use a calculator, then you multiply vertically like so. 6 times 7. What is 6 times 7? The answer is 42. Okay, 4. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. Okay, 1. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. We have one decimal place over here, so count one step to the left hand side, keep a decimal point over here, and the answer is 76.2. Cool, yeah? That is cool, 76.2. Correct. Now, how about how about this number over here? How do we do that? Okay. Using a calculator, you do 45.7 multiplied by 3.6. The answer is 164.52. One sixty-four point one sixty-four point five two. Okay. How about without using a calculator? Now, without using a calculator, the work is the same. 45.7 multiplied by 3.6. Okay? 7, I mean, 6 times 7 is 42. Okay, 4. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 plus 4 is 34. Okay, 3. 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 3 is 20. 7, 3 times 7 is 21, one minute, 3 times 7 is 21, Care 2, 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2, 17, Care 1, 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1, 13, see that? This is 2, this is 5, 14, kill 1, this is 5, 6, 1. How many decimal places are here? In total, we have one decimal place here, one decimal place here, and we have another one decimal place. Total number of decimal places, two decimal places. Now, two decimal places means count from the right hand side, 1, 2. So you keep a decimal point over here. Four, yeah? Same answer. Okay. Uh, another question is... Okay. Uh, this is another question. Draw lines to join each calculation to the correct answer. One has been done for you. Okay, let us see which one has been done for us. They say 10 square is, 10 square is merged to 100. Is that correct? Remember our discussion when we discussed about square numbers in our previous videos, we say 10 square is the same as 10 times 10. And what is 10 times 10? 10 times 10, you just do 1 times 1 is 1. You have two zeros. Put the two zeros on the right hand side next to each other. So that is correct. Now let us find out what is 14 square. What is 14 square? 
14 square will mean 14 times 14. And if you do using a calculator, 14 times 14 will be 196. Now, 196, do we have 196? Yes, we do. So what we do, take your ruler and match the numbers. Match the numbers like so. So, one minute. Okay. So, 14 is 196. See that? It's done. How about square root? Okay. Once again, square root of 300, uh, 361. Okay. Now, what is that? The square root of 361, we said that equals to that equals to uh, we talked about two things the square root of a number equals to the positive result and a negative same result okay now what is the square root of 361 okay there are two ways you can do that either go back to the presentation of square numbers and see if 361 is a square number. So you go back to our previous discussion and stop on square numbers. These are square numbers. Now, do we have 361? Do we have a square number which is 361? Yes, we do. We have the square number 361 361 is a square number now the question is what is the square root of 361 now there are two answers but these two answers are the same but one is positive the other one is negative now let us see if we have one of those two answers those answers are the same but they differ they differ in science, one is a positive number, another one is a negative number, but they have the same magnitude. Okay, now let us go back here. Square of the uh, square of square of 361 is equal to 19 and negative 19, but here we have 19, which is positive, so it doesn't matter. Because we are told to match exactly, so what we are going to do is match them like so. 361 matches with that. 16 square, how about 16 square? Okay, 16 square is the same as 16 times 16. And what is that? This is 256. You can use your calculator and see what do you get? Do we have 256? Yes, we do. We do have that. It's here. See that? Correct. Okay, how about square root of 289? How about the square root of 289? Good. So what do we do? Let me take you to a list of square numbers. A list of square numbers that was discussed earlier. Okay. You, okay. Here we go. The question was 289. That was the question. The question was... 200 let me check properly yes the question was 289 and what was that 289 is here it's a square number so 289 is a square number but the question is what is the square root of 289 now there are two answers there are both they are the same, they are both same in size, 
but different in signs. One is positive, another is negative, but they are the same numbers. 17, 17, but they differ with positive. Okay, let us see if one of the numbers is in the list. Is in the list. 289 is here, but what is the square root of 289? Is available here. We got 17, we got, we got 17, or oh, negative 17, but we have positive 17, so we do that. So far so good, and over here, this was done as an example. We can highlight this. It was done as an example. So to look like that. Okay. Uh, how much time has gone? One hour, 15 minutes. No problem. We can find another page. I want to use one hour, 30 minutes. Okay. Let me check this page. This page looks to be easy. Okay. What did this page say? Okay, Athna uses sieve to find prime numbers. Here are some of the instructions. Cross out the number one. Okay, I cross out the number one. I cross out the number one. Number one crossed. It is not a crossed. Okay, cross out the number one. Put a ring around the number two. Put a ring around the number two. That was already done. After putting the number, after putting a ring around the number two, then you cross out the other multiples of two. Okay, multiples of two, they are already crossed. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. They are already crossed, but I'm trying to highlight 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Now, after crossing out the multiples of 2, what do we have to do? Put a ring around all the other prime numbers up to 30. Remember the prime numbers I told you? I said a number. I said that a number is said to be prime, is said to be prime if and only if the number is divisible by if and only if the number is divisible by one and itself not less than that and not more than that okay put a ring around all the other prime numbers up to 30 okay three put a ring okay. put a ring around all the numbers put a ring around all the other numbers up to 30 prime numbers okay let me put a ring uh, let me found let me try to find a ring over here do you have a ring okay yes we do okay so much Put a ring. Now let me do infinite cloner for that. Yes, put a ring. Put a ring around all the other prime numbers up to 30. So 3 is a three is a prime number. Also 13 is a prime number. Also the 23 is a prime number. See that? How about 5, 15, 25? No, these are odd numbers. Okay, how about seven? Yes. How about, uh, sorry. How about, uh, what is happening over here? Okay, let me lock that in place. All right, all right, seven is a prime number. 17 is a prime number. 27, no, 27 is not a prime number. How about nine? Nine is not a prime number, it's an odd number. How about 19? Yes, 19 is a prime number. How about 29? 
29 is a prime number. Good. So that. Uh, another one is here. This question is. This question says. Work out. Work out 7.4 times 100. Oh. 7.4 times 100. Okay. You Without using a calculator. When you multiply by hundreds, what we do, we move a decimal point two steps on the right hand side. Two steps on the right hand side. Okay. One step is ending on four. You have to move one more step on the right. And that end that ends on no number. So what we do? Put a zero. So the answer is seven four. Zero. This is the answer. So the answer over here is 740. This is the answer. How about using a calculator? Okay. 7.4 multiplied by 100. What is the answer? 740. Good. How about dividing by 1000? Okay, 48.3 divided by, okay, 48.3 divided by, okay, divided by 1,000. Okay. Now for division, for division by thousands, what do we do? We move, if it was multiplication, we move on the right hand side. Okay, we move three steps on the right hand side. One, which is ending on three. Two, which is ending on zero. And three, which is ending on zero. If it was multiplication. Now here, it is division. So what do we do? We do the reverse. Instead of going on the left hand side, instead of going on the right hand side, we go on the left. So we have 48.3 divided by 1,000. What do we do? We count how many zeros do we have? We have three zeros. So move this decimal point three steps on the left. Okay, one step ends over here. Another step ends over here. Another step, the third step, will be ending on a zero. So how do we write the answer? The answer will be the same as putting the zero you keep another zero and keep a decimal point so this will be 0 0.0483 the answer okay let us use the calculator 48.3 divided by 1000 okay you see that 0, 0 let me check 0, 0.0, we got 0, 0.0483. 483. Correct. Okay. Uh, can we say that is enough? Let us check some questions. Oh, yes. This question can be our last question. I mean, this page can be our last page for today's presentation. And next time we can proceed from here. Okay. Let us see how far we can push this page. Okay. Let us start with divisibility by six. This, okay, the table shows some information about divisibility, and I have just recently told you. How do we do divisibility test? By two, by three, by four, by five, by six, by seven, there is no a clear divisibility test, but by eight, nine, and ten, or hundreds, the divisibility tests are there. Now, let us see, what do we do? What do we do if we are figuring out the number if it is divisible by six? Okay, they said, Complete the table using ticks and crosses. The first row has been done for us. 
the first row has been done for us and this is our first row so let us try to proofread it or to just cross check that okay is 24 24 is the number is 24 divisible by 6 you remember the definition we said a number is divisible by 6 if it is divisible by both 2 and 3 i repeat that we said a number is divisible by 6 if it is divisible by 2 it is divisible by 2 and by 3 now is this number 24 divisible by 2 how do we know look at the last digit the last digit is a 4 so since it is ending with a 4 this number here is divisible by 2 how about being divisible by 3 what do we do do you remember the discussion we said add the digits what is 2 plus 4 is 6 is 6 divided by 3 the answer is yes so here the answer was yes divisible by 2 and here the answer is yes divisible by 3 so that is why we tick over here divisible by 8 okay divisible by 8 24 look at the last three digits this is the same as 0 to 4 now 0 to 4 this number is divisible by 8 how much is that? You get 3. So that you take over here. Divisor by 9. Divisor by 9. What do we do? If you want to find out if the number 24 is divisor by 9, what do we do? It's the same as divisibility test of 3. Add these digits. What do you get? 2 plus 4 is 6. Is 6 divisor by 9? The answer is no. That is why that has been crossed. Okay, now let us start with 45. Is 45 divisible by 6? The answer is no. I will tell you why. In the order for the number to be divisible by 6, it should be divisible by 2 and by 3. And this number 45 is not divisible by 2. Why? Because it is ending with a 5. It should be, it, in order for the number to be divisible by 2, it should end with a 2. A 4, a 6, or 8, including a 0. So this is ending with a 5. Okay, so it is not divisible by 6. Okay, is it divisible by 8? No. Because if it has to be divisible by 8, the last three digits should be divisible by 8. How about divisibility by 9? The answer is yes. Why? Because we add these digits, we get 9. Now 9 is divisible by 9. So 45 is divisible by 9. How about 84? Is it divisible by 6? Let us start. The number is divisible by 6 if it is both divisible by 2 and by 3. Let us check if this 84 is divisible by 2. Yes, it is divisible by 2. How did I know? It is ending with a 4. Now, is the same number 84 divisible by 3? How do we do that? You take 84 here, 84, add these digits, 8 plus 4 is 12. Is 12, divi uh, is 12 divisible by, uh, by 3? The answer is yes. So, so since this number, since this number is divisible by both 2 and 3, so the same number will be divisible by 6. And you can check that using a calculator. 84 divided by 6. Do you get a whole number? Yes, I'm getting a whole number 14. How about divisible by 8? Divisible by 8, look at the last three digits. Now, the last three digits are the last three digits on 84 84 has only two digits where do we get the third digit at zero over here so question is is 0 84 which is equal to 84 is that divisible by 8 check that and says no why we are getting a decimal so here we cross how about divisible by 9 
84 is this divisible by 9. What do we do? We add these numbers, we get 12. Is 12 divisible by 9? The answer is no. So we cross over here. How about 360? 360, is it divisible by 6? The answer is yes. How did I know? It is because 360 is divisible by 2. Why? It is ending with a 0. Also, it is divisible by 3. How did I know? Add, add these digits. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 0 is 9. Now, is 9 divisible by 3? Yes. So, because of yes, that shows that 360 is divisible by 3. So, 360 divisible by 6? Yes. How about divisible by 8? Look at the last three digits. It's 360, uh, 360 to 360 divided by, by 8. Divide by 8. What do you get? I'm getting 45. I'm getting 45. Okay, so that is divisible. How about divisible by 9? Okay, if you want to find out whether it is divisible by 9, what we basically do, we just check the divisibility test by 9. So by 9, you write the number 360, add these digits, what do you get? 3 plus 6 is 9, 9 plus 0 is 9. Is 9 divisible by 9? The answer is yes. So either yes, so automatically... That is how it goes. Okay, now uh, for today, we may end up here and we'll proceed next time. And when we come up, uh, when we come back next time, we are going to start with this question and continue until the last question, because the last question is up to the last other questions are very simple and direct are very simple and direct so this is how it goes we have plenty of questions remaining but we will think on how to make the number of videos to be a little bit small number of videos like maybe the maximum should be six videos on this topic of numbers before we start the next topic on sequences, okay? So inshallah, we are going to have like a maximum of six videos to finish this topic of numbers. Until next time, bye-bye for now.